let us uh, look to God uh, for uh, uh, his guidance and direction as we speak on his behalf this evening. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your many blessings. We pause just now, Lord, to acknowledge you and to uh, thank you for allowing us to experience another day on this earth. We give you uh, the praise and glory, honor, because you are the worthy one. And so, God, we thank you tonight uh, to have this opportunity to come once again uh, before these your people to share this word that you've shared with me. And I pray, God, that someone will be blessed, someone will be challenged, someone will be uh, determined to keep on serving you. Lord, I do pray for those that are less fortunate uh, this evening uh, than we are. I pray for them. I pray for bereaved families, Lord. I pray for the Turner family. I continue to pray for uh, Sister Mildred Henderson family. I pray for uh, all bereaved families, wherever they are, not just at New Sardis, but all over the world, Lord. Uh, bereaved families, those that are hurting. There are many that are hurting, Lord. Those uh, family members who are hurting result of a suicide, Lord, we pray for them. We pray uh, for the Lewis Farrell family, that you might be with them and that you might bless them during this time of their bereavement. Lord, we ask not only for uh, your uh, blessing on the bereaved, but on the afflicted, Lord. We pray for those that are hospitalized, those that are going through uh, difficult times, Lord, uh, with their bodies. Pray that you would uh, be with them, give them what they need, family members, caretakers, be with them what they need, Lord. Lord, there's a multiplicity of things that we need to lift up to you. But God, we're content to know that you know all about your people. You created us. You know every one of us. You know us by name, know our address, know where we are. And so I pray tonight for the body of Christ everywhere. And then I pray for your creation, Lord, because you see you reign on the just and the unjust. Lord, I pray that you might touch unbelievers that they may realize you are the creator, that you are the God, and you are the God of this universe. Lord, may something be said or done this evening will cause somebody to turn uh, to you. Lord, we ask now that you take this, these few moments that we will share from your word and, and make it a blessing uh, to someone. For we do ask all of these things in the name of Jesus and for his sake we pray. Amen. All right. All right. Well, sisters, I want to look at something. I'm going to be kind of brief uh, this evening, but I want to look at something in uh, Matthew uh, chapter 6. Matthew uh, chapter 6. And uh, this is uh, part of the text of the Beatitudes. Okay. And I want to look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Matthew 1 through, Matthew 6. One through four, and uh, want to share this thought just a few minutes, and that is giving that pleases God. Giving that pleases God. Here's what it says, verse starting at verse one, Matthew six. Take heed that you do not do you, do not your arms before men. To be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward of your father which is in heaven. Therefore when thou doest thy arms. Do not sound a trumpet before thee. Uh, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets. That they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you. They have their reward. But when thou doest thy arms. Let not thy left hand know. What thy right hand doeth, Matthew 6 and 4, that thine arms may be in secret, and thy father which is seeth in secret, himself, himself shall reward thee openly. And that's uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. And I think you can find something similar in uh, Luke's gospel, all right? And then when he... When he talks about giving, he goes on to talk about uh, 
uh, prayer in the same same uh, context in the same chapter. Now, uh, given I say that pleases God, one of the main things that uh, Christians uh, should want to do, uh, and that is to please God. Amen? We should want to please God and not please men. That's what Peter said over there in the, the Acts of the Apostles. He said it's, it's better that we please God than please man. So our challenge is this evening, as I give to you the word, is that God wants us to please him in everything that we do. And tonight in particular, we're talking about giving, okay? We're talking about giving. Uh, uh, we want God to to uh, to uh, be pleased with the way that we give, okay? We want him to smile at us with respect to the words we speak, the deeds that we do. And how we share his son, Jesus Christ, with others. We want God to be pleased. And I wonder sometimes what our report cards would look like in certain areas of our lives, of our spiritual report cards. Uh, I, I was reading something not too long ago uh, about uh, um, something uh, I think it was a child uh, wrote uh, relative to what I'm just uh, what I'm talking about this evening, and that is uh, they say the child woke up and said, "Dear God, so far today I've done all right. I haven't gossiped. I haven't lost my temper. I'm, I've been grumpy and nasty, and disobedient to my parents, self-centered. I, I'm really happy about uh, that so far, Lord." But in a few minutes, I'm going to get up out of bed. <laughs> and then I'm going to need your help. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, I just thought that was a kind of funny uh, quote that this person uh, seemed to uh, read, uh, seemed to written. And they were focused on the fact that uh, they had done, uh, they hadn't done anything yet <laughs> that they felt was wrong or displeasing the sight of God. But that uh, when they when they got out of bed, it was going to be uh, a different story. But God does uh, command us to uh, live in such a way that uh, He can bless our actions. He can bless our behavior. And when we live the way God wants us to live, when we please Him in our living, then God will bless us. Okay. He will bless us. If we can get a satisfactory grade from God and please God in all the areas of our lives, not just select few areas, but try to please him in every way that we live, okay? And so throughout the Lord's Sermon on the Mount, as you know this is where this text comes from, Sermon on the Mount, he covers many different areas, many effects, okay, and many areas that uh, affect our lives uh, and um, how we live our lives on a daily day-to-day day -day basis. Uh, having just finished talking about love, having just finished talking about love, then he moves on to um, explain to us how to give in a manner that is pleasing in his sight. Uh, I'm looking at the, the text, and, and I think we must know what we're actually talking about here. The word alms is what uh, the writer said, Matthew said. He uses the word alms, A-L-M-S, not A-R-M-S, but A-L-M-S, alms. In verse 1, it comes from a Greek word, le which uh, by definition means compassion, okay? 
uh, and compassion is exercised toward uh, the poor. Uh huh. Beneficence, okay. Uh, 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 concretely, uh, a benefaction, a beneficiary, a uh, benefic, benef what do I want to say? Something that benefits the poor. The Lord is dealing with how we handle charitable giving and, and that we do so in a way that pleases God, okay? That we do it in a way that God would have us do it. When Jesus was here on earth, religious people were extremely charitable in their giving. Can you imagine when Jesus was here, there were those who were extremely charitable uh, when, he, when he was here on earth. But some of them did not do it the way God was pleased. The Pharisees, for example, uh, gave 10% uh, 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 to God as evidenced. In Luke chapter 18, verses 11 through 12, which says the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, as extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and or even as publican. Uh, I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Uh, and, but a rather a close examination of this text would lend us to understand that his uh, their giving was not necessarily pleasing to God because their motives were were all wrong. And if we are going to have the right understanding of this, our giving should be done so without being uh, reciprocated or not expecting anything in return. And so. The first thing I would say to us this evening relative to this text is don't give for show. Do not give to show. Do not give to be seen of men. Don't give to please men, but give to please God. That's in verse 2. Some people like to do things so they can be seen by others. They want other people to know what they do and how they do it. For them, they, the Bible says they receive instant gratification for what they do. And it's, just, and it's just the opposite of what the Lord is instructing us here to do. Here Jesus is telling us not to make a big deal, make a big deal of it by sounding a trumpet or making an announcement of what it is we're doing. In doing so, he says, we're giving off the impression that we are such good people for helping others and, and want others to know what we're doing. Jesus said they have their reward. Amen? They have their reward. Uh, I was reading also in a, a, a book the other day where it talked about the Bible says there is a wrong motive. There is a wrong motive. Okay. Uh for doing good, okay? There is a wrong motive for doing good. And when you do good with the wrong motive, you cancel out your good that you do. <laughs> Help me, God. What Christ strikes at is the motive of the human heart for giving and doing good. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 through 15 is where... Uh, we, we find the Apostle Paul talks about uh, 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 the wrong motive for what we do. Uh, if we do what we do with the wrong motive, we're not going to be uh, rewarded accordingly. Okay? It, it says now uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 12, it said, verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting at verse 12, said, Now if any man build upon uh, this foundation. Uh, well, let me read the whole context. The whole context is for, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, if any man build down uh, upon uh, this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, uh, 
double, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. In other words, your motive is going to be revealed in everything you do. All right? He it says it's going to be revealed by fire. Uh, to try every man's works of what sort that it is. If any man's work abide, he says, which we he have built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. But if any man's works uh, shall be burned, uh, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. Now what Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul was saying here, if your motives are not right, it's going to be tried. And God knows the human heart. He knows why you do what you do. Now, you can fool men, but you can't fool God. He knows why you do what you do. He knows your motives for why you serve the way you serve. And so the Apostle Paul said, it's going to be, what you do is going to be tried by fire. Okay? And if what you do uh, shall sustain the, try, the trying of God uh, in the last day, then he said you are going to receive a reward for what you do. But if you don't, if you, if what you do does not stand up against the trying fire of God, he said you're going to suffer loss. Now he's talking about works here. He's not talking about salvation because he goes on to say that uh, your works will, you will suffer loss, but you yourself will be saved. So you will be saved. We're not talking about salvation you. We're talking about the works that you do, okay? And if your works are not done with the right motive, he says you're going to suffer loss. Uh-huh. And so giving for recognition is the wrong motive for giving. Recognition is said to be uh, sought by blowing one's own horn in two places, in the synagogue before religious people and in the streets before the public. Uh, and he was talking concerning the Pharisees. Jesus said in Matthew 25, 3, But all their works they do for to be seen of men. All their works uh, is to be seen of men. So if you are serving God just so that somebody can say something about you, okay, he said you're already getting your reward. All right? And I, and I think I do need to be clear about something here. It's not always wrong to give when men or people see us uh, because sometimes that can't be helped. But it's wrong to give so that men or people can see us, all right, uh, just so that they can see us giving. Jesus also said in Matthew 23, 12, uh, Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, but he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So don't give for show. That's what I'm saying. When you give for some, give to someone or somebody, uh, 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 some particular person, don't don't sound alarm. Don't tell, you don't tell nobody. Okay. If you're giving for God to magnify God, you know you know what Matthew chapter five says. Let your words. Uh, 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 <laughs> the verse uh, he said. Uh, uh, do do your work so that God will be glorified. Not you, okay? Not men, but do your work so God will be glorified. Don't give for your glory. Give for the glory of God, okay? It says, uh, uh, but yeah, so if you're doing for God, you're going to get a reward. We don't even think about, uh, you know, giving uh, for people. We just do it. Don't think about it. If it's something that needs to be done, you just do it and know that God is seeing it and that God knows about it and that he's going to reward accordingly. Now, what's interesting in our text is that here it says, let not thy left hand even know what thy right hand is doing. Thy idea is to do it so unconsciously uh, because it's pleasing to God, all right? 
let us be mindful that we're talking about alms giving, giving to the poor, giving to someone that needed, giving to someone that's less fortunate than we are. Did you not know that God blesses us to be a blessing to someone else? Everything God gives us is not for us, but it's so that we might be a blessing to someone else, that we might glorify the Father which is in heaven. Because the God of heaven and earth is a God of giving. He's a giver. God is a giver in all that he the God is charitable. Yes, he is. And we wouldn't uh, normally make an announcement doing worship as to how much uh, we're giving, uh, to be brutal honest. But, but some of us would be ashamed, all right, to tell the rest of the congregation, uh, where we serve, uh, how much we're giving <laughs> or not giving uh, to the Lord uh, and for the Lord's work or to the poor. But then the Lord moves on and tells us to give in secret, okay? You see, we don't have to advertise to the world what we're doing. But when we do give, let's make sure that we do do it so uh, for God's glory. Do it for God's glory. God, God is so awesome that what we do in secret, he can bless us openly. And that's what he says he'll do. He tells us in Jeremiah 17, 11, I, the Lord, searches the heart. I try the reins, even to give to every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doing. You see, if we give uh, our alms uh, with the right motives, God will bless us according. But if we do it so that men can be seen, uh, uh, so we can be seen, rather, uh, we are already receiving our reward. So we make the statement all the time. You can't be God-given, no matter how hard you try. But God has been given to us since the beginning of time. It's, it, if, if, if there's anybody who knows about giving, it's God. huh? Yeah, here's what I'm getting at. Everything uh, God made gives. He's a giver. Sun gives. The stars give. The moon gives. The trees and all the green of it, flowers. Birds, all of them give. Ocean gives. All of them nature gives. Animals, air, all of them give. Yes, everything God made gives. But you know what? He has a problem with man. <laughs> man thinks that uh, he is who he is because of him. He has what he has because of him. But listen, you don't. You wouldn't have nothing Zero without God. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. Read that. Read that. That's an interesting chapter in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 8. It said God is the one that gives us power to get well. God is the one that gives us what we have. No, we, we, uh, 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 we can't do it with ourselves. And if God didn't give it, we would not have it. And so he blesses everything to give uh, and bless uh, all of his creation to give. Except for man. Man has a problem giving back to God, giving alms, giving in any way. He is a selfish creature. He wants to keep everything for himself. He wants to can everything he gets and, 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 and can, can everything he gets. And, and then what he gets, <laughs> he wants to keep it for himself. He gave He's a giver. That's what I'm saying now. God is a giver. He gave us life. He gave us a family. He gave us a place to live. He gave us food to eat. He's given us opportunity to succeed. He gave us knowledge uh, that we needed a Savior. He gave us a means to obtain salvation. He gave us his son uh, who hung, bled, and died for our sins. He gave us eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, he's given us eternal home. He's given us a place by which we can spend eternity with him. God has given us all of these things. And so we should be willing to give back uh, something of what God has given to us. And listen, he has told us how we should give. And if we follow his principles, 
I declare, you will see the truth and the reality of doing it the way God gives. He says, give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, shaken down, pressing, pressed together, and running over shall men give in your bosom. For the same measure you meet with them, <clears throat> pardon me, it shall be measured unto you again. Listen, do it the way God says do it, and you will see the blessings of God unfold in your life. God is no 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 shorter than his word. God will do what he says do. Don't be like the hypocrites. Don't don't do it. If you're gonna give, give and let that be it. Don't tell nobody. Do it in secret and he'll reward you openly, okay? And I declare, sometimes when he gives you uh, an abundance, and he does do that, sometimes he gives you, like he says in the word, uh, he gives you so much, uh, he opens the windows of heaven and pours you out blessings, there's not room enough to even receive it. You've got to share it. You've got to tell it, okay? And, uh, and, and, and others will know that what a great God it is that you serve. And, and how he uh, really can, once he gets into your heart, uh, change your heart and make that stingy heart a heart of liberality and you're willing to share uh, with others. God has given us life, brothers and sisters, and he gave us that eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, you, he, all you have to do is receive what he's given you and you too can have everlasting life. And that and that's all that matters, brothers and sisters. When it's all said and done, I don't care how much you've accumulated in this world. I don't care how much you've accomplished in this world. I don't care, you know, your names can be uh, on neon signs. Your name can be elevated in this world so that uh, people will know, oh, you be, uh, that doesn't mean anything. The only thing that matters is what you did with Jesus and, and what you do with Jesus uh, that matters is would you receive him, okay? Would you receive him? Receive him in such a way that he'll change your heart and make your heart like God, and you'll be willing to give just the way God has given unto us. Doors of the church are open. <laughs> I'm in the church building tonight, so I can say that. Doors of the church building are open, and, 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 and whosoever uh, uh, will... The Bible said, let him come. If you desire uh, to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can come tonight. If you uh, would desire to want to be part of New Sardis Fellowship, you can come. Okay. Uh, and all you have to do is call a number. This should be on the screen right after I finish. Be someone there that will tell you what you need to do in order to go forward. All right. Need Christ? Need a church home. All right. Just respond uh, to that document. And I declare... We'll be glad to see receive you. And uh, so with Jesus. Yes, his arms are open wide to receive you tonight for salvation. All right. Uh, a good evening to all of you this Wednesday evening. Wonderful evening. And uh, I trust that you may have been blessed from uh, something that was said or done. 